Hello and welcome back and can you believe we're already halfway through 2025? Men Alive has been something of a volatile little year, isn't it? Oh, it's definitely the end times. Don't look out the window, you don't know what's going to happen next. Well, uh, in today's video, I want to talk about NAS devices that you should be keeping an eye on. Halfway through the year, let's face it, a lot of us are thinking about holidays. We're thinking about going away and sitting by the pool, maybe having an extra little margarita on the side. But September, October, November are just around the corner. And I think a number of you that are eyeing up solutions that you may need for home or business reasons in the second half of the year, at least in a few months' time, might want to keep an eye on things. And in this video, I'm going to tell you five different NAS devices that you should be keeping an eye on in the second half of the year for your next big storage purchase. Let's crack on with number one. Now this one caught me a little off guard. When I was in Taipei in May 2025 attending Computex, um, while I was there, I found out QNAP were running a partner event, their tech summit, and it was quite close by, so I nipped in. And during the course of that, I saw lots of QNAP hardware from the past, present, and future. But one of the things that really stood out for me was their new Nine Bay. This is their intended follow-up to their uh, popular 2020 and 2021 release TSH973AX. Now, this is a new Nine Bay device. It's got five traditional SATA hard drive bays, and it has four U.2 NVMe bays. Now, running on an Intel i3, uh, a 13th generation i3 with six cores and eight threads to play with there, this thing is Definitely a lovely compact little gem of a system. Uh, it's going to arrive uh, with a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 connectivity. It's also going to have 10 GBE. The U.2 are going to run at Gen 3 times 2 speeds there, which isn't going to be for everyone. Um, but ultimately, this is that new compact 9 bay. The previous generation one was a consistent underdog when it launched and it was always popular always out of stock because QNAP never anticipated just how popular it was going to be so if you are looking at a compact hybrid storage system later this year and you want to get one with a comprehensive software on board rather than going for a DIY thing like a, uh, a an Unraid or a TrueNAS and you want to get a pure turnkey this may well be one to keep an eye on. Half a year on, and it is a NAS that we've still yet to see arrive on the scene, at least at the time of recording, the Minis Forum N5 and N5 Pro. This was a NAS that we first saw at CES 2025, and six months on, the brand has continued to tweak it, improve the thermals, improve the power consumption, and even improve some of the connections. And it looks like we're almost on the verge of release. This is uh, their 5 bay SATA and 3 M. Dot 2 NVMe at Gen 4 times 1 and Gen 4 times 2 speed compact NAS system. Also arriving with 10 GBE and 5 GBE on the rear, as well as an Oculink port and Thunderbolt connectivity as well. Alongside this, not only is it supporting third party um, operating systems like Unraid, TrueNAS, Open Media Vault, and more, but it's also arriving with an internal 64 gig eMMC storage that has their own operating system that they've been working on that's based on FNOS included with it at no additional cost. This small storage um, area that was populated by this operating system supports ZFS, it supports containerization, virtual machines, snapshot, um, multiple different storage um, uh, redundancy array options there, file sharing, the works, and also with things like containerization, opening the door to flexible uh, Plex and Jellyfin deployment there, along with others and smart home appliances, and multi-tiered backup solutions as well. Uh, running on the HX370 Ryzen 9 processor, this is a decent little CPU with 12 cores and 16 threads to play with and support of ECC. There is a lot to love about this device. It's not going to be the lowest power consuming, but there is a reason Minis Forum being getting a lot of attention for this intended hardware build. And I recommend you keep your eyes open for it because if you're purchasing in autumn 2025, this may well be available already. Number two. 
Hot on the heels of that Minis Forum is the Areco Cyber Data Vault series. This is a six different product series that we've already reviewed the prototype for here on the channel. It's starting at a uh, standard five bay with two NVMEs with the N305 i3 eight core processor scaling all the way up through dedicated flash solutions to uh, an uh, 11 bay solution that's got five hard drive bays and six M.2 NVMEs rocking out with an Intel 1240p i5 processor all the way up to a stonking 12 oh sorry a 10 bay solution with two nvmes on board it's also arriving with their own operating system included support of 10 gbe support of uh thunderbolt 4 these are beastly systems and just like the minis forum it's got their own operating system built on fnos as well this is a beefy little system and Really, the only negative, I think, will be for some users that it's coming to crowdfunding first. There is early access, and I believe at the time this video is going to go out, it almost certainly their Kickstarter may be live. I know it's going live at some point in July. Um, but nonetheless, right now, if you're looking at compact, scalable solutions there, and one with a bit of a unique design with the way the M.2s are accessed from the top panel, it might be worth keeping an eye on this one. You don't have to necessarily jump on board with crowdfunding because they're definitely, definitely, definitely going hit this one at traditional retail and it would be very interesting to see how this brand that already has got an established history in the world of storage is going to stretch its muscles in the world of NAS with this brand new series. Bit of a quirky one this. Do you remember when we talked about the unified drive, the UT2, a two times NVMe, uh, technically eight core ARM based CPU NAS system that gave you pretty much everything that a standard uh, static NAS system gave you, but it made it portable, running off battery power in that nice little orange case? Well, the unified drive haven't kept their feet up since the launch of that product. And since we first saw at CES 2025, they are working on a much more power user alternative, the Unify Drive UP6. Now the UP6 is a six times NVMe portable flash NAS system. It's arriving with an Intel Ultra CPU, the 12.5H, and that 12.5H, which has got four power cores and eight efficiency cores and 18 threads to play with, is an enormous scale up from that ARM-based processor NAS that we saw before. This one, talking not just AI deployment, but just general power user status, arrives with Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 connections, two of those. It also has a 10 gig connection as well. It has Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, and it arrives with a touchscreen there on the front that you can manage the device without going into the operating system via the application or a desktop. It also arrives with its own OS that we've already explored in great detail when we were reviewing the UT2 and a recent mobile NAS video that we did here on the channel. But this is a very, very unique little portable NAS device. And for those of you that like to have data on the go that you can deploy from a desk with multiple users, either wirelessly or wired, and you want something beefier than what's currently available in the market, the UP6, if they can pull this off, is going to be not only tremendously impressive, but in a unique position in the market that no one else can offer right now. Whether it is that Ugreen having an established you know, notoriety when it comes to peripherals and cables and battery packs and chargers in people's homes and offices, or the fact that Synology has been getting quite a negative publicity recently with regards to their change in policy towards third-party drive verification, whatever way you look at it, Ugreen and their NAS series has exploded in the last year to a year and a half. It's not that they've been new to NAS, they've actually been in the world of NAS since about 2020, but it's only with the release of the DXP series or the NAS Sync series that they've really made an enormous splash and have been procured by a lot of buyers throughout the course of the last year. Now, during this time, they've been talking about their new NAS series, the IDX. This is a separate parallel running NAS series designed primarily for AI. And I know a lot of you couldn't care less about AI, but we'll come around to that in a moment. Uh, the IDX6011 and IDX6011 Pro are both horrifically well-powered devices arriving with the 255H um, CPU series, uh, the 5 and the 7, depending on the standard and the pro class. These CPUs have got 16 threads, 16 cores, or 14 uh, cores and 18 threads, depending on which one you go for there. Uh, alongside that, these have got six SATA bays and two Gen 4 NVMe bays there in the base. 
those CPUs support up to 96 tera operations or tops um, for you to not only run AI processes, but we'll get to that again in a bit, but just standard operations. These are remarkably beefy devices arriving with 10 GBE, reviving again with USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 connectivity, something they're working on to make network connect connectable, and of course, Oculink and USB 10 gig connections as well. Now, AI on an AS, a lot of you don't care. You're going to buy a system like this because the hardware specifications are beefy as all F, and that's a good thing. However, if you do want to pursue a local AI or LLM deployment, so you want to be able to use time and uh, performance efficiency benefits of AI systems in your workflow, but you don't want to trust cloud services, you're going to need a local NAS system with some serious oomph, and that's where this comes in. From not only crawling photos, video, music, documents, and more for you to retrieve that data when needed, but also creation tools to use the data you have made to your benefit. And that's what this system is gearing towards. But crucially, you don't have to use those. You can go ahead and use this with its sheer hardware capability in a turnkey solution, and use TrueNAS, use Unraid, use UGOS that it arrives with, and just have that hardware at your disposal. It's almost certainly not going to be the cheapest NAS in the market. Very few of the NASs I've talked about today are going to be light on the wallet. But for the sheer hardware spec, doubling down on Ugreen's increased positive reputation in NAS, at least at the time of recording, this is something to keep an eye on. But there you go. Those are five NAS devices that if you're looking at buying a NAS device in the second half of the year, maybe keep an eye on because some of these are going to be game changers for one reason or another. Is there a NAS that I've missed out for you that I've not already reviewed on the channel? Do let me know in the comments and there'll be links in the description below to either reviews on these devices that we've done on prototypes or where we've seen them in the wild along with everything we know about them. So I recommend you check that out. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.